Hey friends, welcome back to the WordPress Speed Optimization 101 course. Here at WPMAs, we've got all the guides, tutorials, and unbiased reviews to help you level up your WordPress skills and build a successful career. If you're new to our channel, hit the subscribe button to receive notifications whenever we upload a new video. We appreciate your support and look forward to having you as a part of our community. If you're interested in enrolling in the WordPress Speed Optimization 101 course for free, You'll find the link in the video description area and the pinned comment section. If you need any help related to WordPress, feel free to join our dedicated community for free and we will do our best to assist you. This is the fourth video in the WordPress Speed Optimization 101 course and today we'll be looking at the largest contentful paint, also known as LCP, and how to improve the largest contentful paint. This video will be one of the most interesting and valuable videos as I'll talk about the LCP and how to optimize them. What is LCP? LCP is one of the three core web vital metrics. LCP, largest contentful paint, is a web performance metrics that measures the time it takes for the largest visible element, such as an image or text block, to become visible within the viewport of a web page during the page load. LCP is one of the three core web vital metrics. LCP also has four subparts that are not discussed often. They are time to first byte, TTFB, resource load delay, resource load time, element render delay. All the pages can have their LCP values broken down into four subparts. However, there is no gap or overlap between them, and together they add up to the full LCP time. When you optimize the LCP, you have to optimize all four subparts individually, as optimizing any one of the subparts will shift the time saved to another part. And most of the time, optimizing one subpart won't improve LCP. Now let's look at the optimal time for the subparts. LCP subparts optimal time is divided by percentage. The optimal time to first byte, TTFB, should be 40% of the overall LCP time. The optimal time for the LCP is 2.5 seconds equal to 2500 milliseconds. 40% of 2500 milliseconds is one second. Resource load delay. Delay in loading the resource should be less than 10% of the overall LCP time. The optimal time for the resource load delay should be less than 250 milliseconds. Resource load time, the optimal time for the resource to load should be 40% of the overall LCP time, that is one second. Element render delay, optimal time for the element render delay should be less than 10% of the overall LCP time, which is 250 milliseconds. Important note, the above time breakdowns are not strict rules, but just guidelines. You can ignore the above time breakdowns if your page LCP is less than 2.5 seconds. What elements are considered to be LCP? Image element. Image elements inside an SVG element background image loaded via URL. Block level elements containing text nodes or other inline level text elements. The first frame painted for auto-playing video elements. The first frame of an animated image format, such as an animated GIF. How is an element's size determined? The element size reported for largest contentful paint is the size a user sees in the viewport. If an element extends outside the viewport, then the extended portion does not count towards the element size. Let me show you an example so that you'll understand better. This is how the page looks to the user when the page loads. At the bottom of the page, you see an image that has extended outside the viewport. Here is the complete image. Let's say this image height is 300 pixels and in the viewport. We are seeing a portion of the image and this portion of the image's height could be 100 pixels. For a moment, let's assume this is an LCP element. In this case, the system will record the image height as 100 pixels and not 300 pixels, as the system will not count the element size that has extended outside the viewport area. Here, I need to highlight an important point. Regarding the images, you might come across two terms. Intrinsic size and displayed size. Intrinsic size is the actual size of the element and displayed size is what you see in the viewport. Let me show you an example. This image dimension is 1600 pixels in width and 900 pixels in height. In this viewport, the image width might be 400 pixels and the height 300 pixels. The system will report the image size as 400 pixels width and 300 pixels height and not 1600 pixels width and 900 pixels height, and that's because always the system will report the element's smaller size. Now let's look at another example. 
In this example, the image width is 100 pixels and height is 75 pixels, but the image is stretched to full width, which is 400 pixels and height of 300 pixels. In this case, the system will report the image size of 100 pixels width and height as 75 pixels and not 400 pixels width and height of 300 pixels. Now let me show you a few examples to help you understand an LCP element. In this image, we see the title and some content. In this viewport, the title is the largest element, hence this text will be considered LCP. Many think only the images can be an LCP element and that's not true. Earlier we already discussed that. Sometimes even a text element can cause LCP issues and I'll discuss more about this in the upcoming videos. Let's look at the second example. In the first frame, the logo and text load, the page is still loading and now the title is the LCP element. But in the next frame, DOM adds a new element which pushes the text elements down and it's one of the most common CLS issues. In the upcoming videos, I'll discuss about CLS issues. Then, in the next frame, an image appears and now LCP shifts from the title to this image as this image is the largest element in the viewport. Now, let's look at the last example. In this viewport, we see the title and text. Now, this text element is the LCP element. In the next frame, two images load at the top of the page and one image at the bottom of the page. Take a moment and guess now which is an LCP element and if you know the answer, leave a comment below. The text block is still the LCP as it's the largest element and all the images are smaller than the text block. What is a good LCP score? To provide a good user experience, Google recommends LCP to be less than 2.5 seconds for at least 75% of all page visits. In simple terms, if at least 75% of the time. The largest contentful paint load in less than 2.5 seconds. Then Google considers it a good loading experience. Anything less than 2.5 seconds is considered as good. 2.5 seconds to 4 seconds needs improvement. Anything more than 4 seconds is considered poor. To provide a pleasant user experience, the LCP should load in less than 2.5 seconds. The 75th percentile of page loads is divided across mobile and desktop devices. Is an excellent benchmark to ensure you're achieving this target for most visitors. Some might get confused when they hear 75th percentile. In other words, you can see it as more than 75% of the total page loads. An important note. Most of the time, the LCP can be faster in the field data than the lab data. If you don't know what lab and field data are, kindly watch the Page Speed Insights video I've explained in detail. I've seen thousands of websites, and one of the most common metrics they find it difficult to fix is the LCP. I've seen many people say to improve LCP, you must exclude critical images from lazy load and preload them, which is the most common thing many people do. But the truth is, apart from excluding critical images from the lazy load, various other things can impact LCP's performance. Now let's look at how the LCP can be improved. 20 important points impact LCP's performance. Note, here I'll list how LCP can be improved and in the upcoming videos I'll cover the individual points in detail. Use a well-coded theme, use well-coded plugins, Create header, footer, single post, post archive, single product template, product archive, search page, etc. using a theme instead of page builders such as Elementor. Offload unused JS requests. Delay JS requests. Defer JS requests. Remove unused CSS. Generate critical CSS. Compress images and load them in WebP format. Lazy load non-critical images. Preload critical images. Lazy load videos. Host video thumbnails locally. Optimize fonts and font icons. Check and manage the order of the assets. Avoid displaying ads in the above the fold area. Prefetch or pre-connect third party or what we call external requests. Increase cache expiration duration. Use a quality host and a good CDN. This looks too complicated, but don't worry my friends. I'll cover all 20 points in the most user-friendly way and even a beginner can optimize LCP by following the methods I show in the upcoming videos. In the upcoming videos, I'll discuss the individual points mentioned and how to improve LCP. If you think the content you have watched till now is valuable, then this short video is a must watch for you. If you want to learn how to optimize a website efficiently, the ultimate speed optimization course is for you. Speed up your website, pass core web vitals and increase your business growth. This course is suitable for complete beginners, intermediates and advanced users. 
Here is a website that scored 16 on PageSpeed Insights and took 29.2 seconds to load. In just a few hours, the website scored a perfect 100 and loaded in just 174 milliseconds. Become a speed optimization expert and expand your portfolio. You are not just learning how to optimize websites. In the 100K Web Agency Mastery course, I'll show you how to find high paying clients, generate recurring revenue, etc. If you're wondering how much I charge for optimizing a website, the pricing starts at $500, which can go up to $30,000. I want to see you charge the same to your clients. By the end of this course, I want clients to search for you and not the other way around. The first 300 people who join the Ultimate Speed Optimization course will get a 100K Web Agency Mastery course worth $497 for free. Course links are in the video description and in the pinned comment area. Thank you for watching. If you want to see more such videos, like the video, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel and share the video with others. Sharing the video with others will help me get more views and motivate me to create more valuable videos to help you and others. We appreciate your support and look forward to having you in our community. I'll be back with another video soon. Till then, take care. Bye.